Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We will have a brief session today. We'll be talking about museums as one of the tools to regenerate and revitalize the city environment. We'll watch a small video and we have Basif Khan, a big friend of ours, an architect from uh, the, the UK, attending our session today. So, it was just announced, uh, a new session was just announced, projects that changed the face of Moscow. First, I would like to show you a video about Garage, it's one of the art sensors, centers, and then we'll talk about, uh, we'll, we'll discuss this matter with Asif. Well, we have mentioned Garage Art Center already, and but I think we should ask our guest here to tell us about the project that he had in Almaty. It's about a cinema which is which has a very good location, and we made a pop-up exhibition there and we we created a lot of other things there on the basis of that building just making sure that the city sees that this is a new building but as if will tell us about the union forged between architecture contemporary art art and museums this museum of uh, this the union was forged by Renzo Piano and Richard Rogers when they pulled, let's say, the insides of the museum business and make it made it public. I think this project got another momentum when the government focused on renovating those buildings. Then there was a new project and I think this project currently has historical significance for the city. And do, Asif, do you think that the center 
after it is finally renovated, will have a bigger impact on the city. So it will not just be another contemporary art center or a performance venue. It will be something else. It will help to reinvent and revitalize the city, change the surrounding environment. Like there will be cafes, parks. Do you think that projects of this kind may may help transform the city life? It's difficult to say yet. It's just the first project in Almaty of this kind. Anton, thank you, and uh, thank you uh, for, for for coming today and inviting me to be part of this conversation. Uh, this is a, a a great question, and if we look at a project like um, Garage in in Gorky Park, we can see that it's. Uh, change the way the park is used and kind of offers sort of a new facility of, for thought for um, for citizens. And um, Almaty is a is a uh, it's a beautiful city. If you haven't had the chance to visit, I, I recommend it. And I'm, I'm going to show some slides of Almaty in a moment. Uh, I think the opportunity of a building like that, a centre like that, is to ask the question, uh, like, who are we? And, uh, and where are we going? And where have we come from? So it's a question of identity. And architecture, uh, when it is involved in the act of transformation from, um, let's say, an existing building into a, uh, um, a new building, has the opportunity to reflect on um, the contemporary idea of, of, um, of uh, the personality of the city, the personality of the residents. And, um, you know, much in the way that uh, Renzo Piano and, and um, uh, Richard Rogers created a sort of empty space for ideas to emerge um, uh, and changed the city grid and made, uh, operated with the, um, the idea of a public space, a uh, large public space outside. Uh, we're trying to kind of plug in to the existing feelings of the city and amplify them uh, to learn about the history of the, the building uh, but not to let that strangle the opportunity for the future. Uh, um, Cellini uh, Center uh, originally was a, a cinema, as, as Anton said, it was the largest cinema in the, in the uh, had the largest screen in the, in the uh, CIS region at some point. So it's the IMAX uh, of its day, uh, hosting, you know, 1,000, uh, 1,000 people, 1,600 people in each seating. Uh, okay. Thank you. Um, <laughs> like, um, I feel my job as, a, as an architect, it's not to impose like my ideas of um, of modern architecture or contemporary architecture on this city, it's more to act as a uh, like a conduit and uh, to find uh, to find the spaces, uh, opportunities in the existing building, the opportunities in the public space, and create um, uh, like rooms for for thought to happen inside the building. So it's it's like um, uh, filling the gaps and uh, and sometimes inflating this filling medium until the point where you can, uh, new things can come into it. And um, I'm, I think the one thing to bear in mind is you're, this is a, a nation which is in a point of redefinition. It's coming from uh, being part of the Soviet uh, Union and uh, it was a capital city and it's not a capital city anymore. And I think the artists are in a kind of, are in a um, very important position to help people kind of grab onto what that place is about. Um, the building has an identity uh, linked to 1964, which is when it was made. It's also had numerous renovations over time. And so it's been sort of part of, um, uh, let's say, the changing nature of the city. Cinema itself is a, uh, is a medium which is reinventing itself um, every year. And so in some way, we need to create a space that can operate, uh, although it's an art museum, can operate with the same uh, um, exuberance and speed uh, that cinema uh, does so capably. Maybe uh, a chance to show some slides. Можно презентацию включить на Massive? Okay, so I can grab the clicker. 
Okay. I'm going to give you a little introduction to Almaty. Um, Almaty. Oh, you should go, should go there. Al Garage has just, has recently received uh, released a guide on Almaty postmodernism time, and Almaty is like a museum of modernist architecture, and Almaty is no longer the capital, and all those buildings have been preserved there so you have a chance to see it as it is now and you have you then have a chance to visit the Selene opening ceremony a beautiful city and it's it's a city of nature it was designed as a resort city so you have mountains and greenery you have tremendous skies this is a photo from the airplane as, as I was landing uh, um, uh, one day you have parks uh, beautiful kind of modernist icons. This is a chocolate factory kind of tucked behind uh, uh, beautiful trees, public spaces. It's very walkable. Markets on the street. <laughs> it, it's uh, even the, the modern projects to, to sort of provide more um, um, uh, easy seating space have, have actually done pretty well. And you have also this network of canals, um, these Arik channels which were designed in the 1960s to, um, to kind of spread cool water around the city from the mountains. And that acts as a kind of natural, um, uh, natural air conditioning device for the city. It's built as a, as a grid. And Cellini Center kind of falls into one of these city blocks. You see it right there in the center. And it sits at the end of this uh, kind of great axis through the city. Ooh. This axis through the city, which in its day was called the Almaty Broadway. So it was a kind of place of theaters. It was a district of, uh, of entertainment. Uh, now it's, it's pretty quiet. The cinema hasn't been used for the last, uh, uh, let's say, around 10 years. Uh, now, very interesting uh, kind of urban uh, planning idea of 1960s, sort of, it's part of the kind of I guess the atheism that was that was sort of the dominant concept in in sort of Soviet ideology. You see a church which is just above. Um, maybe I can use this button. I don't know. Uh, да, вот это вот здание кинотеатра ржавое, если вы посмотрите. Из... So this building with a rusty roof is the cinema, and the next to it, in the form of uh, a cross, is a church, and the church was standing in the end of the lane. Used to provide the the kind of end of this 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 great axis through the city, the Nikolsky Church, and um, in 1964 the urban planners put the cinema in front of the church, and in doing so, kind of replaced, uh, let's say, traditional culture with contemporary culture, which is, is quite a strong avant-garde urban move, and uh, um, for us, it's quite interesting as a kind of thought. In the new Cellini, do we? How do we deal with that um, that history? How do we kind of pay attention to it? And it's kind of one of the challenges uh, in projects. Do you try to revert the city back to how it was, to an ideal, like a moment in the past, or do you um, do you work with uh, the, like the scars which have been built up over time as as sort of important memories of how uh, change happened? This is. I'll come back to that in a second. This is the the cinema in its kind of golden era and you see this enormous, enormous glass facade and that was the first of its kind in the city and people queuing to take in this, uh, the atmosphere and at night time this tremendous mural was revealed so this is by one of the, the great sort of um, let's say architectural artists of the day um, um, Sidorkin he was a, uh, I think a, a Russian born but had um, emigrated to Kazakhstan and uh, did a lot of art uh, in the region on, 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 on buildings. So we discovered, in fact, um, Anton discovered <laughs> this mural hidden behind a plaster wall inside the, uh, the Cellini Center. Maybe, Anton, you can describe this. Uh... Uh, it's made of Sidorkin's graphite so to speak and in 1990s it was believed that it was completely destroyed and but when I walked into that building I thought that 
I thought that it wouldn't be right to scrap all this. So we started looking into it. I knocked on all those walls and I realized that it was just a plaster wall. And behind that plaster wall, we found that facade, that mural. And it was very, very well preserved. That building, that building is no lo is no longer used as a cinema for 25 years. That, then there was a club there, so it, it it was a miracle. We, however, this discovery made Asif's life a lot more difficult because he has to somehow work around this Sidorkin's graphite, whatever it is. But we are, we were happy to discover this, and when we did the pop-up, a lot of people recalled that they had their picture taken against the palm tree. One lady even cried and told us a story that she used to come to the cinema together with her granny. So it was a landmark place in some way, but at the same time, time it was a very advanced architectural project this very light and flying facade I would say it's a wonderful project and Asif being an architectural visionary wants to reinvigorate this building I find very interesting this the difference between day and night in the uh, in the facade because uh, a lot of people remember it like this uh, because it's also how it was remembered in popular media as something completely transparent and with this mural very visible from the exterior. But this photo is taken at night time. So in truth, by day it looked like this, which is a black box. So it had this kind of double personality. And uh, this, is, this is something to do with the um, uh, interesting comment on the kind of collective consciousness. Like what do we remember? Which history is the truth? And uh, um, and like what makes it into our kind of uh, intangible um, cultural memory. So these, these are, when you just get close to these murals, it's something uh, beautiful, a little naive, let's say, in the, in the kind of art form, but it's something which captures a moment in time, uh, which is very special, I think, and uh, we're delighted that Anton discovered it. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and it's something, um, which we're taking care to, to kind of make part of the narrative. But it's interesting, it's an art museum, it's a contemporary art museum, it's, it's somewhere where we, can, where we want contemporary artists, contemporary Kazakh young artists to impact on how, um, on the evolving identity of the nation. And w there is a challenge, I'd say, in having a um, historic monument as, um, as a sort of primary facade which those artists have to operate within. Um, it kind of uh, is to say that the canvas isn't blank anymore. The canvas is already um, not just the building asserting its memories, but also the memories of another artist become, uh, um, um, let's say, put to the fore as a, as a kind of masterpiece. So this is another challenge we're having to play with, how you create a kind of l series of layers of, uh, of thresholds from the outside to the experience of this Sidorkin um, and, then, uh, and then to the inside where there's this enormous auditorium, a kind of auditorium where anything can happen, uh, performance, uh, sculpture, um, you know, um, even cinema again, uh, cinema, film, film festivals and so on. Um, these images haven't come out very well, but yeah, you see an image here of the... Um, of the, uh, the building, it has two parts, the kind of auditorium at the rear, and you can see this, the Nikolsky Church, which is hidden from the main view, and this front block, which has the, uh, the, the mural in it, uh, and administration spaces. I'm, I'm not gonna show you the final design because I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not allowed to yet because it's still secret uh, for a few more months until we complete the design. So, um, but, to give you a sense of it looking down the Broadway and you almost see the top of the church here um, behind it and the journey onto the roof. This was the first time we went onto the roof and we realized the roof space itself um, is an art space. It's like the perfect art space. It's clean. It has no um, context apart from 
the sky and the mountains behind it. So we made a decision very early in the project that we would turn this from a, a kind of waterproofing, a rusty waterproofing, into um, like a great new contemporary art space for Almaty. And, and this question of how we address the urban scar, uh, we don't do it by lowering Cellini or removing Cellini so that we can see the church again. We just let people step up onto the roof and, uh, and rediscover that relationship that used to be there. So it's a building uh, which will have a lot of surprises for people. And we're trying to kind of carefully uh, narrate this relationship between the past and present and the future uh, through the architectural interventions we're, we're, we're making there. Um, we're interested in sort of the heaviness of the concrete, but also how we can reflect um, the changing nature of, um, uh, of kind of artistic movements and the changing nature of the landscape that is uh, that, Alma, that characterizes Almaty. Um, I mean, maybe um, it's interesting, Anton, if you could sort of continue, we can continue this discussion about um, the relationship between art spaces and architecture and how that has, I mean, I know um, Garage has a very close relationship with, with, with architecture in general, and you publish guidebooks and so on. How has that evolved? Like, why, why has that become part of the, the narrative of, uh, of your museum? No, that's what it's like, historically, it, it's, it was part of our history. Garage did, did acquire its name later. It was just called uh, Contemporary Art Center to start with. And then people asked to start ask, uh, started asking us question, are you located in the garage? And indeed, that building before was used as Novikov's garage. And we decided to give this name to the art center. And indeed, we have a number of architectural pr projects. We had this makeshift pavilion built by Shigeru Ban. Then we also have another one which is built by Rem Kolhas, and we have the summer cinema. I'm not sure if you saw that. It's like a pyramid with a cut off top, but inside it's like a David Lynch cinema. It was built by a team of young architects. <laughs> Architecture is in our DNA because because I think it's a shame if um, a contemporary art center is located in an, in an improper building. So it needs to have some. It needs to bear some relations to the history and to art. And this is exactly why we decided to start cooperating with the with the team who wanted to reinvent this Tsilinne building because they saw that we would like to keep the connection of this building with its past, but at the same time we want to reinvigorate it and add some more, more significance and sense to it. In the regions, we have quite a number of contemporary art centers which are being built in abandoned factories or abandoned cinemas by artists. And I think this is probably the most logical use for these buildings and facilities. And but once this center is set up and running, it starts modifying environment around it. Because people want to see more beautiful things there. Like, for example, garage transformed the entire Gorky Park now. Now we are extending this influence on the building of Moscow Institute of Steel and Construction Materials. So there is a lot of impact. We have the same opportunity in, in Almaty, and I should say something about the the, um, the team that are making it happen. There's um, uh, uh, the investor is Kairat Borembeev, who's who's uh, um, now kind of heavily involved in real estate in in, in Almaty and owns uh, the football club there. But this project is a sort of um, is a uh, let's say an unusual project for him. I think it's. He's transitioning into kind of understanding the value of um, uh, culture within the city. The football club is obviously part of massive part of, of of culture there, and I think he saw this as an opportunity to make a new, let's relationship with the citizens um, and give something back. And you've got this amazing uh, kind of 
um, director of the project, who's uh, Jama, uh, Jamila Nukilieva, and she's the person who contacted me originally. To, uh, we, we became uh, connected at the Astana um, Contemporary Art Center, which was at Expo uh, Astana, which was the Expo 2017 where I'd seen the project that they did, and they actually did a, a fantastic project in collaboration with Garage uh, at, this, uh, at the expo. And I was just taken back by the, um, the kind of openness of the project they had, they had um, created there, the, the, the amount of debate that they had, this, the workshops with children, uh, the kind of exhibitions they had in collaboration with you guys. And I just said to her, whatever you do in the future, I'd like to be involved um, to somehow help you. <laughs> And, and a few months later, she said, look, there is an opportunity to try to do something here. Um, and, and I think coming as an outsider to, to Almaty, I hope I was able to, I, I am able to see opportunities in this building which maybe um, people haven't seen before. And, um, and I think a lot of people with this building wanted to, de uh, to demolish it and to restart, you know, and that's a sort of attitude um, I think all over the world with historic buildings, it happens in, in, in London a lot of times. Um, and of course we have a process of listing and historic building listing. Um, but we forget, the, uh, we forget that these buildings hold um, a space in people's minds. And that is a great starting point for, um, for sort of introducing them to new culture. So you, know, you mentioned uh, you know, garage is, is an existing building and that's a great place to start, where art can start. And I'm kind of wondering, um, do you think if you had a new building as opposed to working in a historic building, it would have an impact on the kind of work that you could show there or the reaction that you get? No, I just think that no. To be honest, no. I guess that we have to take old buildings, we have to work with them, we have to add something new to them. I don't think that new buildings which could be built somewhere in the field, so they will have the same effect. So, yeah, maybe it will work out, but again, it will have completely different experience. And now people, when they come to garage, they have some kind of association with the past. And it's very important that we show this link with the past. So we have to be over. You see, they wave at us that we have to leave the platform. I would like to ask you to come to Almaty. It's a great city, great uh, great uh, project uh, and even the priest from the church he supported us and he said come over and we'll have a lot of comers to the church a lot of attenders